Anna, can you tell us more about, about your story? So you yourself, you're a student from Belgium. Okay, why did you decide to study abroad? What came in your decision to study abroad? Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to be here and thank you all for joining. Um, just, I'm Hannah. I'm originally uh, from Belgium, uh, from a little town called uh, Grimberge, which is uh, close uh, to Brussels. Uh, like Hubert said, I did my uh, education in uh, the Ka Catholic University of Leuven. And there I actually did an exchange program and because I was kind of exposed to like uh, uh, studying abroad there, I actually enjoyed it so much that I uh, did not want to work in Belgium. And um, that's when I was uh, came to like the MBA center. I was a student of the MBA center myself. And uh, initially I applied for two programs, which was uh, Vlaerik Business School, which is a very uh, famous Bel Belgian business school and then uh, ASCP, uh, which is very famous in France. I decided to go abroad because, uh, again, like, um, I knew that, uh, like, my, uh, my goals were actually not to work in Belgium, because otherwise I would have gone to, like, Flaric, because it has, like, way better connections with, um, um, yeah, with uh, Belgium companies. Uh, but uh, right now I'm uh, at ASCP, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, uh, I have uh, spent like uh, some time in Italy uh, and normally I would have gone to France, but yeah, due to COVID, um, yeah, with the curfew at six, it was not really a good idea. But um, enough about me, um, maybe I think you have like lots of questions for me. Uh, I went to the process myself just, uh, and actually like last year, so I'm like actually the go-to person to actually, um, yeah, ask me questions, any doubts you have, something like that. Go ahead. Uh, basically, yes, I don't know. So we have to explain to them the process, but I don't know how familiar they are with it. And okay. from there, we'll ask them to ask questions, and then there will be Alexandra from that will come. So, so basically, so as you know, so and, and uh, Anna is going to tell you the process. Probably when you uh, started, I don't know, the KUL or uh, the University of Ghent or uh, ISHEC, uh, you applied probably right after the, the high school diploma and you had to the best to complete an application and sometimes you don't yeah. even have to, to complete anything, okay? And okay. then, uh, so basically, but you have to explain to them and how it works, but of course when yeah. you apply uh, for top NIM programs, for top business schools in Europe, such as LBS, LSE, HEC, ESCP, the process is a bit different in that you have to take a language test, so IELTS or TOEFL, you have to take an assessment test, so GMAT or GRE, or uh, a home-based test because a school like ESCP, like AI, like EZAD, like VAU, they have their own based test. And finally, you have a, a quite complicated application to write, huh? you agree, enough, and depending on the school, and finally, you have an interview, okay? So can you tell me about your journey? Of course. Uh, Anna? Does, um, does before I was a lawyer, but I didn't want to become a lawyer because it was not really me. And then I uh, changed my uh, education uh, towards like more a master management. Um, I started to um, like with, go to the applications. First of all, uh, it requires lots of research because there are like so many different MIMs programs out there. And uh, for instance, with me, um, I was solely in, in initially aware of like Flaric Business School because it's very uh, famous in uh, Flanders. But then due to my research, I also came in contact with other Belgian business schools, which are like, for instance, Silva so Business School or uh, Antwerp Management School. Um, and uh, so how does it start? Just for, first of all, you need to like, um, register yourself on a website and um, like you probably already know like just some first of all just, just some personal data then some personal questions about like your international exposure about like your uh, previous academic career about like your future goals as well uh, where you see yourself working and so on just um, that's actually one part of the process there's kind of some an essay and some uh, personal questions. So that's one. Uh, then to proceed uh, in Vlaric, I needed to do the VBATs, which is an in-house uh, assessment test. 
And uh, this in-house assessment test actually um, tests your um, data, um, data analytic skills. It's not purely like mathematics, it's more like graphs um, based on like graphs, uh, the data that you kind of retrieve for, from it and then based on some formulas. Uh, test you have one, the personal questions and essay. Second, the VBA team. And then afterwards, three, you have the interview. And regarding the interview, I know that lots of students are kind of a bit terrified for it. Um, I was too, um, although I love to speak as I'm a lawyer, but uh, still, um, TUS, um, you have the interview and most of the time they start just with a question like, present yourself and then afterwards they ask some very specific um, questions about the program that you actually know that uh, kind of to see like if your career girls fits with what you want to do um, and then um, to uh, kind of um, yeah proceed um, then afterwards um, maybe some like questions about Belgian uh, economy for instance I remember if I remember co correctly like uh, with me there was like a question about like the Bell 10 and it's like uh, the 10 uh, companies of Belgium that are like on the stock market. Um, and they just asked me like to, to sum up some uh, yeah, companies of that. And then another question was regarding the Belgian news. Um, they just wanted to know if I follow the news and so on. Um, so yeah, that was kind of um, my process, which I went to for Flavic Business School. Okay. And um, for ESCP, what was the process for the ESCP? ESCP uh, it was, um, like a similar process, uh, so it's also like three steps. First of all, um, personal questions and a personal statements. Um, although I must say like uh, the process for uh, Flywick was shorter than the process for ESCP. Second of all, it was an assessment test. Um, to, um, yeah, you needed to uh, complete um, like also again, uh, an in-house test, which is the uh, SHL. Um, again, data, uh, data interpretation and um, also the uh, test of, uh, of ESCP was um, like in my uh, understanding, it was more difficult than the one of uh, VBAT, but kind of similar. And then uh, next up was again the interview. And uh, for my interview with uh, ESCP, it was with the campus of Berlin. Um, they uh, asked me, for instance, a question about like when the school was founded, um, or because it's like the old, like the oldest uh, business school in Europe. Um, and another question was kind of similar as uh, as uh, Flerik, like just something more personal about me, about how I would proceed, uh, about would I do like a double degree or an exchange program, just so they can actually test my knowledge um, of um, the program. Okay, so you see, so basically, so Anna went through a different process. So she decided to take uh, home-based test, if you want, so that of Derek and that of ESCP. Of course, if you do this process, it's a bit difficult because it means you're going to have to take the test of each school. Okay, so for instance, I have an Indian student, her name is Anushka, and she's in the same situation as, uh, as Anna. Well, she, so she, she's applying to uh, VAU in Germany. So she has to take the VAU test, then she has to take the SAD test, then the AI test because she wants to apply also to student Presa, also to ESCP. Of course, it's not the easiest process. You agree, Anna? But of course, because there, is a, there are two universal tests that are the GMAT and the GRE. Um, so there, there's a student that I know. So Nathan, hello, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Can you unmute? Yes, hello. Hi. Yeah, hello, Nathan, because I know Nathan. Huh? Uh, so, Nathan, and then hello, Alexandra. Uh, so, you, you have questions for, for, uh, for, um, for Anna? Because you're in the process yourself. So, do you have any Hi questions? Hi there. Hello. Uh, on my side, it's yeah, pretty yeah. clear from now, but if you had to give you know, yourself an advice, would you rather like take one exam, such as the GMAT, that covers everything? Or do may do the internal uh, examination of every university? I mean, of if course. you're easier or not. Um, 
Just thank you, first of all, for your question, uh, Nathan. Um, just for me, I was in a very particular situation as I uh, am a, a, like a former law student, because, you know, um, I'm not sure if you're like uh, familiar with the stereotypes, but uh, we were pretty good in text, but we're not very good with math. Because for me, the GMAT was actually no option. Um, Cause it, and that's actually why I was very happy that the school also provided like internal tests uh, which are way more uh, oriented towards uh, like data um, interpretation instead of just like uh, bare like bare mathematics. So you see, because I have the, the example of these Indian students, and as you know, Indian students, and you may know or not, in, uh, apply to many schools uh, and, and uh, apply for many schools. So so she's it's not very practical. So what I do a lot, one of the strategy that I use is in Atan, prepare the GMAT with the student. Imagine that. They don't get the GMAT that they want, then we take uh, uh, we take ESCP as a backup because ESCP has its own test called the SHL. See, so for instance, yesterday I had, I had the issue of two students from the University of Bath that were following who got accepted to LBS uh, to uh, ESCP because they have not been able to invented comma pass the, the GMAT, uh, and now they are preparing the the GRE by the way, which is an easier test to uh, then apply to, to ESCP. But of course, ES, uh, to apply to ESSEC, sorry. But ESCP has this big advantage that they accept you either with a French test called Pajmaj, either with two uh, American tests called GRE, or with their own test called the SHL. Uh, so if you apply to ESCP, I don't know if we did that and when we applied, but you can take, you can apply, you have an interview, and if you get accepted, they ask you to take the test. That's what you did. We took the test once, once. So once you had been somehow pre-accepted, which is a way for you to see. But anyway, Nathan, ESCP is a school that we're going to target for sure. Huh? But it's not our priority. So thank you very much, Anna, for for your time because I know that you have uh, you're, you're very busy. So uh, Anna is currently in Turin, huh? okay, yeah. and she she got accepted for an exchange program with Saint Gallen, okay. So we congratulate her, targeting uh, Cornell. I said okay from. KUL from Ivy League would have been a great, great thing, but you know, it's, uh, it was a uh, misunderstanding. Uh, and now we, we are negotiating with Anna because it would be good that she takes a gap here. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, also, uh, you see Nathan uh, or what, whoever, it's good to be accepted somewhere. But what I want to say, and really believe me, because I, you can hear from my accent that I'm French, getting a great program is not enough in life. Okay. It's, it opens the door. But if you don't build your resume through clubs, through internships, through gap years, through a network that you build, uh, you will not do very well. Huh? So you have to, uh, you all know that you have to build your network. So thank you very much, Anna. Thank you for being with us. Okay. Um, I just want to wish that's, everybody that's the best piece of luck. advice. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I just want to wish everybody the best of luck. And again, like for me, going to the MBA center, it was. I, it's really crazy, but it like literally changed my life. And um, like me and Hubert were still very good friends, and he still gives me like very good advice. Always honest, not always like what I want to hear. But uh, yeah, it's like I think you're very like in very good hands. And um, again, for me, I'm very happy that I did it. And also, like you know, you can always add me on LinkedIn. Send me like a personal message if you have like any questions. Um, I'm very happy to answer. And um, yeah, the best of luck to everybody. Okay. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. She's in, in Turin. So uh, have a good ski. <laughs> okay. So uh, Alexandra, you want to introduce yourself maybe? Huh? So, yes. So you so... See, uh, maybe before she introduces herself, so you understand that, and Nathan, who is, uh, who is, who is preparing the, the GMAT, knows. So of course, the big hurdle, and you agree with me, and Alexandra, is the GMAT, okay? Uh, um, you agree? It's, it's the, the big hurdle. And what I wanted to say is that, you know, last time I was talking to a student of mine, almost uh, probably a student-to-be, he said, oh, we have an interview with, with, uh, with nine students. Uh, we're, preparing the, we're preparing the LBS interview, so I make three groups of three. And people started to tell me, Oh, yes, but it's easy. You're a good writer. Your students, they get in. No, say they get in because their GMAT is between 690 and 720. Okay. They will not get in. There will be no interview if they didn't have a good GMAT. Okay. And Alexandra will confirm. Okay. 
So the first hurdle is a good GMAT. If you have a good GMAT, you can make it. If the GMAT is not good, it's going to be difficult. And I would say that for this school, by the way, Alexandra, she got 680. Uh, you don't need to have a 680, but at least I would say a 650 is an acceptable score. Huh? Okay, so don't have a look at the, the statistics, okay? Uh, they don't really mean much because they have also a lot of Chinese, a lot of Indian students who score pretty high, okay? But 650 is good enough. So, Alexandra, thank you because you, you left uh, the inside uh, seminar for us. Uh, yeah. So, can you tell me more about yourself, Alexandra? Well, hi, everyone. I'm Alexandra. I'm from Moldova and I did my bachelor's at ESSEC in Paris. I applied with Hubert last year to LBS in Siad, St. Gallen, and HEC. And I got into uh, LBS and uh, in Siad. I didn't get HEC because uh, I'm from ESSEC. And I didn't, uh, I mean, when I got the offers from LBS and INSEAD, I just canceled my um, application process with San Gallen because it was too long. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send me some questions in the chat about applications, whatever, and I'll be happy to answer. Now, uh, basically, so with you, uh, Alexandra, we're going to cover something else because the situation is a bit different because you have been accepted to INSEAD and then you have applied for personal reasons. You have decided to get some more work experience before starting the MIM within SEAD. Huh? Okay, uh, that's a specific situation. Yeah? Yes, yes kind of yeah. like that, basically, because I thought I need a bit more experience uh, before actually starting the MIM, because afterwards uh, you're going to start di directly probably applying for jobs, and it's very competitive at this point and it's very important to get more uh, work experience so basically I got the offer last year and I deferred in July and right now I'm on a gap year basically uh, uh, accumulating more internships but it's very competitive and also uh, the people who are currently in the program are struggling very hard to uh, even pass screenings because of corona and because of the competition uh, what is important to know, I guess, it's an advice. Uh, you pay this school basically for its network, so you need to leverage it. Don't expect to apply on the portal and just get in. Uh, reach out to people, talk to people, because eventually one door is going to open. So, very good. So, I think that Alexandra, she, she mentioned a good thing, is that there's a, there's a real issue when you're going to start to apply, you're going to see, is that there are two-year programs and there are one-year programs. Okay, so the French programs are uh, two-year programs in general because that's the way we conceive the masters in France, and most of the masters, the other masters in the rest of the world, are uh, one-year program. And I'm going to see that inside is a very specific format because it is in between in the two. But me, I'm not a big fan. Uh, I hope that there's nobody from MBS of a school like MBS, for instance, because and I, I know the plan pretty well because I have to prepare my students for job interviews. Okay. Because you have job interviews in September, October. So you, you start the, the master's, let's say, late August. And six weeks after the, the beginning of the program, you already have job interviews. So imagine that, imagine like someone like Alexandra was uh, completed her bachelor at ESSEC. So she spent four years in a business school. Then she would have had like six months of internship plus one year of gap year. She could perfectly have, and she's pretty well trained in interviews. So she has no problem probably passing this interview because. She's, she's, uh, yeah, she, she's an eligible. She already had how many job interviews have you had in your life? Like some 50 minimum, huh? And, and you, now you're working for what? For, K, for KPMG in a... Uh, no, I'm not working for anyone at the moment. I'm in the process yeah. with BCG, so... Yeah, but yeah. You, you, you had many, many, many uh, job interviews and you have worked before, so you had many internships and now you, you have, uh, by the way, you have also seminar, I believe, with McKinsey. You have been invited to McKinsey conferences, so... You, 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 you're somehow a veteran in this field, but imagine that you're someone uh, from Belgium. Usually in Belgium, we don't really have many internships because there's the prime of the second session that we have. You have to see that in our country, see Alexandra, uh, many people will fail one or two exams and they have to retake an exam in, uh, in September. And because of that, most companies do not offer internship because they know that the person won't be able to complete the internship. So they say enough is enough. So, uh, so few come with experience. So I would say that I'm not sure that the one-year one year program at LBS is the best option for you because you will have interviews just six, six to eight weeks after having completed the program. So you have, you have not been able to grow, to mature, 
to learn enough to be a competitive uh, interviewee. Okay? Yep. So against that, we have the two-year program. Plus, you have to see, for instance, we have the example of Anna. So Anna, for instance, we have designed a program together. So she has spent, she has spent one year interviewing on the SCP campus. Then she's going to spend six months in St. Gallen. Then she will take eight months. She will take a semester off. But with a summer in days, like X months. So she will spend probably in London. She works, She wants to work in creative industries. And then she will do the last semester uh, in, uh, in probably in Paris to graduate in December 2022 and start her job in January 2023. So it's a, it's a great thing. So it means that she will have learned two languages. She will have learned Spanish, uh, Latin, uh, French and Italian. She will have... Uh, uh, improving German, okay? Uh, in our country, as you know, we have uh, official languages, so she speaks already Dutch, so she speaks Dutch, she speaks English, she speaks German, she will speak French and Italian, like you, she's a polyglot like you, Alex Moura. So that's something that you can do with a two-year program that allows you to get a gap year. So I really strongly suggest to that. So at INSEAD, it's in between. So can you tell us more about the INSEAD uh, uh, curriculum? Uh, and um, how does it work? Yes, sure. So it's basically, um built as the MBA and it lasts for 10 months. So you have 10 months divided into five periods. And in each period you have two or three super intense classes uh, followed by uh, two workshops. I can say from my friends who are currently doing the meme that it's extremely intense. They have classes from eight in the morning until 10 from Monday to Saturday. So basically you can say it's two years condensed in one year. Okay, but at the end, so basically the way it works, so in July, August, so you have like e-learning classes, from what I understand, okay? Exactly. What I've experienced last year, because yeah. of course, we don't even have one course, we don't even have one class, huh? because they started, so then you, they have two months of uh, online classes, mm. then they have um, one semester in Fontainebleau, okay? Then one semester in Singapore, so they are now in Singapore. And then after that, you have a, a six months internship. Am I right? It's part of the program. Uh, internship it, is part of the program. It's That's not compulsory. Me. Basically, if you yeah. get a work, a job offer, you <laughs> can <laughs> not do the internship. So I would probably do that because, I mean, I think I will have had enough internships and I don't see the point of <laughs> doing an internship. It's, yeah. But it depends on the profile and the person. Because, for instance, we have doctors in pharmacy who have no experience. And obviously, someone who has a doctor in pharmacy and then is doing the meme, he might need to do an internship. So it depends from one case to another. Yeah, it's, it's possible. But you see, so me, I have a little bit more experience. So it's a bit like a master in finance. I don't know if you know, but in master in finance, you have like uh, nine months of class. And then after that, you, have a, you, you are going to start a sort of graduate program, uh, which is an internship, okay? So you have a six-month internship in the Bulge Bucket Bank, really. and after that, you get a job offer. So like you get an internship, and after that, you get a job offer, and you're going through something that we call a graduate program. So it's somehow built, because probably in SEAD, they recognize that uh, one year was not enough. By the way, the, the success of INSEAD as an MBA program was the one-year program, and they have done a breakthrough, the way they are ranked number one in the FT, uh, now. But of course, for the MIM, it's questionable. For instance, to give you an example, in the center is present, we work a lot with Bocconi. So Bocconi is like the survey of Italy. And I've noticed that my Italian students, they hate the one-year format. They hate it. They, they want the two-year format because uh, they, they want, for them, a master's is two years. So it's up to you to decide, OK? Now, there's also, also another issue, which is of the work experience, OK? Um, so. I, I agree with you, Alexandra, I perfectly agree with you, is that too many people believe that, that, that in a great degree is enough in life, okay? Mm -hmm. And I would like really to tell you that it's not enough in life, okay? No. You don't convince an employer to take you because you have a lot of degrees. It's, it's not enough. Of course, if you have a specialized degree in a specific field, of course, if you are extremely knowledgeable in a, in a language, uh, in, a, in, a, in an IT language, okay, that few people master, it's true that having knowledge in this field and a degree in this field may be enough, okay? But of course, imagine that when you want to work in banks, in consulting, in big corporation, imagine that when you apply to Google, I have a student of mine who told me that they applied to Google, he told me that for one position, there were 500 students and they told me they were all from Polytechnic or HEC or Oxford or Cambridge and there was only one position. So we say, okay, coming from LBS, 
okay, you, 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 you in the competition, but it doesn't give you an edge. Huh? So you have to yeah. understand that it's not enough. What is you? Because you, you're in the process of getting uh, recruited by the BCG. So how, how do you feel with that? So how useful is the degree uh, and what is missing? Well, first of all, I need to mention, I didn't target in the beginning a very uh, competitive office because I'm basically going to intern probably, hopefully, for the Budapest office. But I think if I have BCG on my CV and I get an offer, I can more easily uh, transfer to a more lucrative, let's say, office in Dubai, for instance. Uh, I'm not interested in Paris because uh, from my experience with people who are training for the Parisian office, they only recruit people who did prepa, so I'm not even going to waste my energy to apply to Paris. Uh, I'm not interested in London either for personal reasons, so I will probably target Dubai uh, upon graduation. And my plan to get there is surely by contacting people. I don't think screening uh, is going to work from what I noticed with other people from INSEAD. Yes, that's, that's basically that's something, but of course, so Alexandra, you can see she's very mature, very advanced. Uh, can you tell us about your background for the for the students so that they understand you're going to compete? You have to see that if you come from Belgium or you come from Belgium, but now you're going to compete when you're going to apply uh, for a master degree at the HEC in Seattle or FBS. You're going to compete against people like Anna. So can you tell us, like Alexandra, so can you tell us more about your, your background, uh, Alexandra? Uh, yes, so I'm from Moldova, which is mm -hmm. Eastern Europe, basically, and I uh, did my bachelor at ESSEC. Uh, in France, in the English track, I speak uh, French, English, uh, Russian, and uh, Romanian. I'm fully fluent, and uh, I want I wanted to do a master in management after uh, the BBA of ESSEC because it's not enough for consulting. Uh, I want to work in consulting, and I really enjoy doing case interviews actually. And I actually wanted, uh, I chose INSEAD because it's very close to consulting companies. And I really hope that upon graduation, I'm going to uh, join uh, an office, let's say, either in Western Europe or uh, Middle East, because uh, it's not very convenient to go back to Eastern Europe because of the salaries, obviously. So when you invest that much in a degree, uh, you expect a return on investment. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. By the way, Nathan, you want to work also in consulting, huh? And, and I told you uh, that uh, INSEAD is a good school, and you have to understand why it's a good school, because the MBA being ranked number one, uh, they attract uh, BCG, Ben McKinsey, and they know that the MIM will be ranked pretty well as well. So it, it's a good investment, even though the farm is not ranked uh, today, because you have to see... I yeah, By sorry. the way, I'm sorry, I just came from a meeting from INSEAD and there is a girl who deferred, uh, she started basically period one and she deferred because of visa because she's from Australia, but she told me basically she got contacted by recruiters from McKinsey and she already has an offer. So mm -hmm. that, that, sa that says for itself. Yeah, so basically it means simply, it means that, that the school uh, is pretty, uh, because of the MBA, so the MBA is a sort of tax sheet, okay? So now all the firms that are going to, to open and develop will also be very successful. Huh? You, you see? Huh? So it's not because the school is not ranked that the school is not good. Simply, the reason, the, the way to be ranked, they have to interview students three years after graduation. So they can interview, they will have students graduating in 2021. It means that they will be uh, interviewed in 2024. So it means that INSET will appear, for instance, in the active ranking, not before, for the, the, the spring 2020. Five, uh, ranking okay but meanwhile you know that the school uh, is, is doing pretty well and given the reputation it's fine for instance to give an ID last time I met uh, the recruiter from Ben from Ben in Belgium so but she's in charge of, of Europe of the recruitment for Ben for all Europe because the HR service of Ben from what I understand from Western Europe is based in Brussels and uh, she told me that she has a flat there and she told me that she spends 30 weeks per year uh, at INSEAD uh, so, and she meet, and then of course she travels a bit, she visits uh, LBS, but you understand that, imagine that she has to spend like uh, 15 weeks at the office in Belgium, uh, 30 weeks uh, in uh, at in Sead, and then uh, one, one week maybe in London, see that she spends most of her time in uh, in, uh, in Fontainebleau, and the same applies to uh, Ben, BCG or McKinsey, 
that do the same thing. Okay, so they're already present on campus. So I'm sure that they, if they interview the MBA students, they will also interview the MIM students. It's impossible that they don't do so. Huh? So what is, what is the what is your so basically, uh, did they have interviews this year, or did it work for for for, for recruitment? I think uh, did they already have their interviews? Uh, uh, there is yeah. round two. Basically, uh, I only spoke to people from round one and round two. So there are three mm -hmm. more rounds. But honestly, the crowd is super diverse, and the people are very impressive in terms of career and and studies before, and very diverse as well. So I look forward to seeing the other three rounds. Um, for the moment, I don't see many French people, to my surprise, because in the previous uh, cohorts, I've noticed quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Right now, to my surprise, I don't see any. I presume because they apply later, but I let you comment on that. Yeah, maybe they, you see, uh, Alexandra, maybe if you already French, you have studied all your life in France, uh, maybe you want to uh, you want to see uh, to see something else. Maybe they want to go to the UK. They want to go to Switzerland. They want to stay in Germany, in Spain. You know, of course, it's 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 their problem. But of course, if you study at INSEAD, there will be one one semester in Paris and one semester in London, uh, in Singapore. So you you won't you won't be lost. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? So the only one that I know uh, today uh, is uh, is Nata. I, there's also so Jan. You have, you have a question, Jan? There's also Jan that I know. You have a question to ask to, to Alexandra, Jan. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, sorry, I um, I went late because I had another meeting. But if I have uh, well understood you're studying at uh, l'INSEAD right now and you are in mass... Ah, no. Sorry, because I, I missed the introduction, basically, so... Yeah, I'm doing it basically starting from July. Okay. And so you have been accepted and... Uh... And I deferred, yes. Okay, okay. And so have you applied to different uh, French business school or only instead? Yes, I applied to HSC and they rejected me because I'm from ESSEC. And to other ones, I didn't apply because, uh, I mean, I don't see the point of doing ESSEC after doing ESSEC for four years. Okay. And the other ones are not that well ranked, so I didn't care. Okay, well. Yeah, so, so she, she's, uh, she's right. And also, you have to see that if you if you're super ambitious, huh? for instance, if you want to work for Goldman Sachs, then you should do more like an MIF, okay? And you have to target some schools. If you want to work in consulting, you have to see that why? Because these uh, recruiters are super selective, so it's preferable to have a degree from a very good school, huh? okay? So basically, it's not easy to say about the ranking, but I would say today in terms of MIM, I would say one probably HEC, two. Probably Saint Gallen, three in Seattle, probably, even though it's not ranked, four LBS, uh, five maybe ESSEC, okay, six probably I would put uh, Rotterdam, seven uh, Copenhagen, eight uh, ESCP, okay, nine uh, Bocconi, and maybe ten uh, ESAD. That's my personal ranking, okay, so basically, uh, and our students usually apply to uh, LBS, uh, INSEAD, HEC, uh, ESSEC, uh, St. Gallen. That's where our students apply in general, okay? Because these schools are what we call brands, so we know that no matter what, they will always be well ranked and well recognized, okay? You said, yeah. Jan, so Jan is applying, for instance, so you, Jan, you're applying to what to ESCP, ESSEC, because she's taking a test, a French test, she's taking the Taj Maj, okay? Mm -hmm. And also using, uh, because she's a University of Bath uh, student, Using that, we're also going to apply to LSC and Intel. Okay, and then of course students decide the school that they, they prefer. Uh, of course, we have a lot, a lot of French students who apply to UK schools because French love London. Uh, uh, there's a big French community. There's uh, they are very strong in finance. Uh, so yes, it's a, a great destination for French. Yeah. So I have a question here. What kind of internship did they do until now? So yeah. during at the SEC, I only did one internship. Uh, one six month internship in luxury and it was not for LVMH or Kering, it was for Lubuta, so it's much smaller. Afterwards, I don't consider it an internship, but I think it definitely helped me uh, get what I wanted was the Accenture Chair, which is basically a program within uh, ESSEC. And right now I worked for three months at Deloitte in audits and I found it boring, so I resigned. And right now I'm in the process with BCG. So yeah, 
not much work experience. Yeah, but for your age, how old are you, Axel? Are you 21, 22? How old are you? <laughs> I'm older. I'm 23. 23, but you, 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 you're young. Uh, I guess because, yes, it's true, because uh, ESSEC was four years, so you graduated when you were 22. Okay. So it means that you are, you know, yeah, you're 23, now it's normal. So what I want to say is that at 23, it's perfectly normal. You already have a good experience. You already have a lot of interviews. So don't forget that, yes, you're going to compete against people who have a lot of work experience because when you study at ESSEC, every summer you have to do an internship. So she did an internship after year one, after year two, after year three. Uh, now uh, gap year, so she comes up with uh, something like four internships and sometimes even more. So that's something very common, yes. So what I want to say is that, of course, getting work experience and having uh, really knowledge and understanding of the, of the corporate world is very important. Me, myself, I'm a professor, but I also own a, a company. And I, and I can see that it's not someone, because someone has a great degree, that the person is always, uh, can be a, a good. Now, of course, you're more, you're more likely to have a good employee if he's an inside graduate than if he has no education, for sure. Huh? But uh, sometimes it's not enough because, as you know, a lot of, you know, of you know, company has to do with interpersonal relationship, you know, with flexibility, with the way you deal with others. But that's something, of course, that is not really tested in, in a program, okay? Uh, and uh, the GMA doesn't tell us anything about this, even though, of course, during the interview, they try to test that, but of course, in the interview, you can uh, sometimes pretend that you know the person that you really are. In, in 30 minutes, you can build up a, a character. Yeah? Uh, any other questions? So, Nathan, maybe last question for, 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 for us because I have a seminar with friends now. So, Nathan, uh, what are the questions that you have? Because basically, you want to work in the same field as uh, Alexandra, you want to work in consulting yourself, you're already a consultant, so mm -hmm. you're roughly in the same situation as Alexandra, by the way. Yeah? Because you took a gap here. So, any question for Alexandra? My side, it's pretty clear. Um, I just didn't quite get, but because I'm, I'm very, I'm, I don't have any expertise, but I didn't really understand why you got rejected to, from HEC. It was because you were at ESSEC. Yeah. I quite didn't understand that. Yeah, because basically what happens is that in France, we have a, we have a preparatory system, mm -hmm. okay? And people who go uh, for BBA at ESSEC, at ESCP, at Lyon. Lyon. They don't go into the prep program, into, so they get accepted directly. That's what we call a call post back, okay? And HEC doesn't want to take people with, with, a, with a DBA, okay? So they don't mind taking someone like you. Imagine that you're French, well, not you're Belgian, but imagine that you're French and you have a DBA from ESAD, okay? Yes. Then there will be no problem, okay? So for instance, uh, Sami, that we both know, okay, he is a DBA from ESAD, okay? And he could get HEC, okay? But if you have a French DBA, they will not give you HEC, which is strange. So, you're French, you're studying at ESAD, uh, you, you can get HEC. Okay. Uh, but you're French, you study at ESSEC, you cannot get HEC. Well, and I'm not that's French. Stupid. And plus, she's not French, okay? But mm -hmm. she's, uh, but she's, uh, she's Moldovian. But what I want to say is that, uh, so, but let's say with this type of degree, they don't get you in. So, yes, if, but if, for instance, if you had a BBA from ESC, that then we'll have to do, no, we're not going to apply to HEC, ESSEC, or ESCP, okay? But it's a different okay. situation for you, yeah. Okay, it's good. Uh, you, anyway, you have the counter example of, uh, of Sami of Sami yes. Uh So yes, there are things to do. So basically, Gina, Leonardo, Mirako, Dean, uh, okay, all the people who have attended the webinar. So thank you very much. So uh, Maria, you will do the follow-up of these students. Huh? Maria, yeah, hello. Maria? Yes, yes. Yeah, you will do follow-up with these students. So I hope that it was useful. Huh? So basically what MBA Center does, so we prepare students who have the all-in package, okay? And with all-in package, we prepare you for the TOEFL, so we have an online class, then we have group classes for the GMAT, and then we have a coaching system for uh, the interviews uh, and uh, the application, and it's pretty uh, pretty relevant. We, we have, uh, last year, we had about 1,000 students, and we have, uh, we have a global company. Uh, for instance, after the seminar here, yeah, I give seminars with uh, America uh, this evening. So we have uh, an office in Dallas and an office in Lima. And by the way, I have students from the US who are also applying for masters and a lot apply for masters in Europe. By the way. So the, the reputation of the MIMs and the MIS in Europe is very strong, even though now you can also apply to uh, masters in the US, MIT, Duke, Michigan, Boston University, uh, NYU, uh, UPenn have great masters in management as well, so that's that's a possible option that you can have. And myself, as you know, I went to the US, 
that's something that they would advise personally. Huh? Being European, maybe say, okay, I spend enough time in Europe. Why not try another continent? Alexandra, famous last word, as we say. Thank you very much for coming. What would you say? What are the most useful pieces of advice that you give to our guests? Um, I would probably advise them to think about what they want to do and choose the program based on their career goals. Because if you want to work in the US, you go and do your master's in the US. If you want to work, I don't know, in the UK, you do a master's in the UK. So think about your career goal and act accordingly. And obviously, if you're paying that much, make sure you use the network. That's my advice. Jan, you have a last question? Jan? Um, yeah. Yes, uh, maybe. Uh, so I would ask, um, uh, so at uh, INSEAD, you're doing a master in uh, management, uh, right? Uh, two years master? Master. No, it's the GMAT master. master. Uh, no, but it is a two years master, right? A master in management? Ah, oh, no. Wait, what master is it? Ah, one year. Okay. Yeah, one year. In Miami okay. is one year. Like it was, it was designed because Alexandra she told us that you have five periods, so it was redesigned from the same program as the the form of the of the MBA. So they have really aligned mm -hmm. the MIM to uh, the MBA. By the way, they, they are building their reputation on the MBA, which is, as you know, today ranked number one in the FT. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Nathan, for coming, Jan for coming, Dean, Dina, uh, Leonardo. It was nice to have you on board. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexandra.